Now, the Russian invasion on Ukraine enters the 28th day and a big win for Ukraine here. Its troops were able to regain control over a strategically important suburb region of the capital city of Kiev, which has forced Russia's relentless onslaught for four weeks. In fact, this, there is no respite. Putin's army has shelled multiple buildings in Kiev's Obolon. Loud explosions were heard in the eastern parts of the city and according to reports, over 30 rockets were fired in Kiev. Russia has now launched cruise missiles from Sevastopol area of Crimea that has been occupied by Russians. In the Marinka town in Donetsk region, the scenes are as devastating and destruction there all over. Charred houses, buildings that has re reduced to rubble. In Mariupol, Russian troops can be seen launching an all-out attack with military tanks strolling on the streets of the city. In Chernihiv, the Russian troops bombed a bridge connected that in fact connected with the capital Kiev. The bridge was used for humanitarian aid and evacuation of civilians. All right, let me quickly cut across to Olga Vorozbit, who gets us an insight from Lviv. Olga, give us an understanding. What's the situation on ground? Would you be able to show us what's behind you? Uh, well, hello. I'm behind. Um, I'm behind the railway station. So right. we, this is where most of uh, most of IDPs, so people who are coming from those regions which are heavily bombed, coming. But as you as you may see, I'll, I'll try to. Um, so, moment. Right, Olga. Uh, 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 what's you, the situation in Lviv? You are in Lviv currently. What's the situation there? Well, the situation here is. Uh, well, as 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 it was, so uh, Lviv is the the main point where the most of um, IDPs, so people who are coming from the heavily bombed regions, are coming here. So the region itself hosts now um, half million of people from uh, Kyiv, from eastern, southern, uh, western, from eastern, southern, uh, also northern Ukraine. Uh, so from all those cities which are heavily bombed by Russia, and it is also a kind of a humanitarian hub. So. Um, because most of people who are coming also and want to uh, cross um, uh, cross to the to the EU countries to Poland, they are also coming through Lviv. Um, at the moment, um, like 10 million people in Ukraine are displaced, so they had to um, they had to leave their houses and come to some safer areas. Um, and uh, among them, half million is uh, in, in the Lviv region. Not only in Lviv, but in the mm -hmm. region. You know, uh, we, we understand that Russia has upped its offensive. Uh, several areas are still being bombarded, but uh, they aren't able to get control of their strategic port city, Mariupol, as much as they wanted to. Uh, we hear that uh, resistance has come from Ukrainian forces enough for Russia to, uh, in fact, be stopped on their tracks so far, so many weeks, and they've not made progress. Yes, well, the Ukrainian resistance, um, as I hear also from our foreign friends, as they um, estimate this, and from here, from those people who live here, it's some, something unique. Because, uh, you know, Ukrainians know that they are fighting for their land. They know that they are defending their future. And they also, and we also say that we're defending uh, the future of the democratic world. I mean, uh, because Russia is a tyranny, um, and as they, they call they want just to eliminate everyone who is democratical, who wants to be free, who wants to choose their future. And that is why Ukrainians are so severe but fighting for their future. You know, while, while this war is on and where, where there are uh, diplomatic talks that are currently underway, there's much accusation coming in from Ukrainians that Russia has been targeting relief aid, has been uh, not agreeing to uh, lay out green corridors. Civilians are their primary target. And this has been on. In fact, in the latest, we hear that Russia has seized rescue workers in Mariupol. So those who need aid and rescue, civilians who need to be protected, aren't being allowed. Well, uh, Russia violates there's, there's all the rules of war, which uh, which would imagine. Um, so humanitarian corridors and the situation in Mariupol is kind of a humanitarian catastrophe, just because um, those people whom I hear who come here from Mariupol, what they say, it's Im impossible just to imagine even what they what what they felt when they were lucky and uh, when they were lucky just to get out of Mariupol. Um, and, you know, uh, and, and there are still 
thousands, ten, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who are in the city and who need help. Um, and so many times, any talks about humanitarian corridors and um, helping those people who are there, they were violated by Russia. So we now hear that uh, the foreign minister of, uh, of Greece even um, agreed that he would lead uh, the humanitarian mission there. Um, he's speaking about that. So we, we, we really, really, really hope that something may change and these people will be able uh, to get out of the city, civilians, and to get out to the Ukrainian territory. Because um, Ukraine and Ukrainians, uh, we are worried about those people whom Russia took hostage to their territory from Mariupol. So um, right. you that know, is why the humanitarian... Olga, we really are, want to know, uh, while, while we know that uh, millions of civilians have already fled your country, there are many of them who still remain, millions of them who still have managed to stay back, and they've uh, fled from their hometowns to other safer areas. Uh, would you be able to elaborate on those safe zones that uh, civilians have moved towards, uh, which so far has not come under fire uh, by Russian forces? Look, uh, almost any place uh, was... Like almost any region in Ukraine was bombed by, by Russia. So I'm speaking from Lviv, but we also had missile attacks and just the recent one was just a few days ago. Um, Russia uses missiles and, and it is able to reach any region. But still, uh, because of the geography, we, we still have a, a relatively safe zone, which is Western Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And this is where most of the people are coming. Uh, but I also hear, for example, that some people are coming back to Kiev because uh, they were unlucky to right. um, to take it and they wouldn't be lucky to, to take it. So, but anyway, the safe zones are in Western Ukraine and this is where most of the people are coming. As I already said, 10 million Ukrainians are now displaced. So they left their houses um, just to be, ju just for safer places. Um, and some half a million are here in 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 Lviv region um and also like m over three million moved uh, abroad uh so and the, the other people the rest people are um mainly in the western ukraine yeah you know olga now at a time like this when you're uh, into war on the 28th day we hear biden is going to be coming down to europe he's going to be addressing uh, european union leaders uh, does that really make you give you a sense of security or a feeling of uh, help that you that may come your way or is this only going to escalate the war because putin of course is now guarded he is trying to flex his nuclear might uh, how does ukraine uh, look at this Look, no one can imagine what's in Putin's head, but we need support. Ukraine needs support uh, from all the Western powers. Ukraine also needs support from India, which is the biggest democracy in the world. And we are here staying for democracy, for the ability to choose our future for the free world. That is why um, we need support of all the countries. And what Biden does, what the U.S. does for us is very important. Any support, sanctions, um, support with weaponry, support with taking um, refugees from Ukraine, humanitarian support, any support is needed. And um, Ukrainians are really thankful to any, every citizen in the EU, in the Western countries, also in, in Asian countries, um, today, by the way, uh, Ukrainian president will speak to the Japan, uh, to the parliament in, in Japan. So we, we, have, we are thankful to any help we have. And uh, what U.S. does for us, we really appreciate this. And this is very important. Olga, thank you very much. Um, our prayers with you, with the people of Ukraine. Ukraine, it's, it's, it's uh, the, possibly the largest humanitarian crisis in modern world that we see happening in Ukraine. It's very unfortunate that this war even had to take place. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you're safe. We're going to shift our focus here on the other side.